first hundred years. Prize-winning drama written by Jean Holloway and brought to you by Tide. P-I-D-E. Tide. Wash Day Miracle that gives you the cleanest clothes in town. Tide's in with a dishwashing miracle. Cleaner dishes, ring free pans, Tide gets grease as no soap can. Tide really belongs in your dish pan, because it actually makes dishwashing a clean, pleasant job, instead of a greasy, messy one. Try it for yourself. You'll find it's a miracle the way Tide cuts grease. Makes grease seem to disappear right before your eyes. Even the dishwater stays fresh and clean till you finish the pots and pans. And with those everlasting Tide suds, there's never a greasy ring left round the dish pan. And just see Tide get dishes cleaner, more sparkling bright than any soap of any kind. All without a bit of wiping. Because Tide never leaves a speck of soap film to stop them. Your glasses will show you a diamond sparkle. And with all Tide's cleaning miracles, you'll discover something else mighty important. Tide kind and gentle to hand. Now milder than ever before. Yes, you'll love Tide for dishes. There's no soap, no special dishwashing product made that'll do them easier for you. So try Tide for your dishes. Yes, Tide's a dishwashing miracle. Cleaner dishes, ring three pans, Tide cuts three says no soap can. Get Tide today. T-I-D-E, -E, Tide. Yesterday, Claire Martin gave Connie something of a dressing down, the statement that Chris should have left his job rather than work for the DA. Connie left him in tears, somewhat chastened. Mary is preparing to leave for home now, still worried about Chris's assignment. Goodness, Claire, if I don't hurry, Frank will get home before me. Is that bad? Well, no, but every time that happens, my goodness, uh, Frank goes through the house cleaning Mary, and one night the neighbors called up to see what was wrong, and Frank said such terrible things to them why they didn't speak to us for a week. <laughs> well, Frank, you better go home at once. But show us Frank the ribbon. Maybe that'll appease him. Oh, Claire, it's so pretty. I just w wish I could wear it right now. No, no. You better let Frank see it first. Well, goodbye, dear. Oh, Claire, I do hope Connie and Chris settle things. And, you know, I'm so sorry for poor Mrs. Kling. This whole business is getting rather serious, isn't it? Yes, dear, I'm afraid it is. Well, goodbye, Claire. Goodbye. You're right, Mary. The moments Mrs. Kling is living now are like moments in a nightmare. Strange, dark, terrifying. Johnny Peters must find the answer and the solution to his own fear. The answer to his own sense of danger. But did you ever meet George Graham, Mrs. Kling? No, no. Or would you know George Graham if you ever did meet him? Why do you keep questioning me? I told you it was a hit and run. I told everyone it was a hit and run. Would you know George Graham if you ever did meet him? Why have you come back to torture me? Why have you come back to torture me? And you saw what happened to your husband that night. You came to the door. Now, what did you see? I saw a man. What man? My husband. What else did you say? Oh, what do you want of me? What do you want me to say? Well, what are you going to say to the police when they start questioning you? The police have questioned me. I've told them that it was a hit and run over and over. I said it was a hit and run. I know you told the police it was a hit and run, but how long will you keep on telling them that? Now, I want to know if you'd recognize George Graham. get there always before Frank comes home. I'm sorry I said what I did about 
Chris working for the DA. You're right, Mother. I, I have been selfish. Well, dear, we all get selfish now and then. It isn't Chris's fault that the insurance company gave him the cling case to investigate in the first place. I've been acting as if it were. Yep, I've been prize number one heel as far as he's concerned, haven't I? Well, dear, don't go overboard in the other direction. I have. I'm not just eating humble pie. I'm rolling in it. Hi, honey. I thought you'd never get here. Hello, darling. Honey, I, I know I'm late, but I had to go over and talk to Mrs. Spring again. Darling, there's something I, I've got to tell you. She's been assigned to the DA's office to hunt for Graham? How did you know? Oh, honey, that's old news. I know everybody knows. Well, Connie, now I know it's bound to upset you, but... Well, my boss just called me into the office and said the DA had requested that I be transferred to his office, and, well, really, there was nothing I could do about it. Of course there wasn't. Don't worry about it. You mean you don't mind? Of course I mind, but I realize you can't do anything about it. Oh, honey. <laughs> oh, darling. <laughs> you know, you know, I was actually afraid to come home and tell you. Chris, I don't want you ever to be afraid to tell me anything. I think we're both old enough, and we've been married long enough to know we have to understand each other's problems. I've been very unfair to you about Mary Jane, and I'm sorry. I insisted we take her in, and I've no right to expect you or anybody else to solve any problems about her that we can Honey, I'll help whenever I can, you know that. It's just that, well, there are limits to what I can do right I now. I know. Well, Mary Jane's really going to hate me now, isn't she? Let's not let her know if we can help her. She never understands. She's too young. If I can only get something out of Mrs. Kling. I'm sure she knows much more about her husband's death than she's saying. Mrs. Kling could free George Graham of that murder charge, couldn't she? Mm. Maybe she could. Maybe she'd send him to the chair. There's no way of telling, dear. She did see something. Why do you suppose she hasn't admitted it? I think she was afraid. Do you think she understands that George Graham's life may depend on her testimony? Honey, it's impossible to make Mrs. Kling understand anything. She just keeps repeating, it was a hit and run, it was a hit and run. That's, that's all she'll say. Maybe you haven't tried the right approach. Well, I've tried every approach I could think of. Oh, only she could be made to realize it. Chris, would you mind if I talked to her? Oh, no, honey, I don't think you ought to get mixed up in this. I, I've told you so often, this is a nasty business. I don't want you to get involved. No, but look, Chris, I might be able to make her talk to me. Maybe she'd trust another woman. Oh, Chris, it couldn't do any harm to try. Just let me try. I could go over right now. It, it, it's so early. Well, she won't tell you any more than she's told anyone else. Maybe she won't, but at least I'll feel as if I've tried something constructive. Oh, please, Chris. Well, honey, if your mind's made up, I can't stop you. I just don't think it's a smart idea right now. I, I know it's a long chance, Chris, but it's a chance. Right now, I can't afford to pass up any chance. Mary Jane! Well, why are you calling Mary Jane? I'm going to take her with me. To Mrs. Kling? Yes. I want Mrs. Kling to meet George Graham's child. Now, Mrs. Kling, I asked you if you'd know George Graham. Why do you keep avoiding my question? Because I am afraid. Well, what are you afraid of? What are you going to do to me? Well, why should I do anything to you? Because I know who you are. Do you? Who am I? Oh, dear God. It can never again wonder any peace for me. Who am I? You're taught Graham. You're taught Graham. What makes you think I'm George Graham? Oh, you told me so. You told me. Did I? When did I tell you? The night you were here. The night my husband was killed. Johnny Peters. Johnny Peters was here. He was going after Mrs. Kling. Did he? Did he go after Mrs. Kling? Oh, my dear, you must have been dreaming. You said you were tired after dinner and wanted to lie down, and you were very restless while you slept. Oh, my face hurts. And perhaps you were lying in an uncomfortable position. Oh, my head. Like I get you some aspirin? No. Wasn't Johnny here? He hasn't been here all evening. That's strange. I saw him sitting in that chair. He was on the phone. No. You were on the phone. 
And Johnny was talking to you about Mrs. Kling. Well, my dear, you see how mixed up you are. First you think he's here, now you think he isn't here. I was the only one here tonight, and Johnny was on the phone. Johnny was on the phone. And you were angry because he was telling you that he was going to talk to Mrs. Kling, and you didn't want him to talk to Mrs. Kling. You said the people were watching. The police were watching the house, and you didn't want any rough stuff with Mrs. Kling. Yes. I remember now. That's how I found out that Mrs. Kling was the most important witness, the only one who knew, the only one who could... Who could clear George Graham. Yes. I was going to warn Mrs. Kling, and then... You struck me. I didn't dream it. It was real. Johnny's with Mrs. Kling now. I don't know where Johnny is, but wherever he is, he'd better not upset the apple cart. Because if anything happens to Mrs. Kling, we'll all be in the soup, and nobody can cover that up. Johnny's a murderer, Bob. Well, he's not going to do anything to her. He may try to frighten her, but he won't do anything to her. He's a murderer, Bob. A murderer. <laughs> what does it matter? What does anything matter? My husband is gone. No one can bring him back. You're tired, Mrs. Kling, aren't you? Very tired. Sure. You're tired, that you're not well. And you've been under a great strain. You know what, Mrs. Quinn? You should leave here. Hey, you should go someplace where they can't ask you any more questions. Where you can get a nice rest. Oh, where would I go? I have no money. I'm needed here. My children need me. I can give you money for a rest, Mrs. Quinn. You can go out in the country someplace where they won't be able to find you. They can't ask you any more questions. I'll give you enough money so your children can go out there, too. I can't go. I can't leave. They won't let me go. You're leaving with me now, Mrs. Swing. Get your coat. No, no. I won't go. I won't go. Now, look. You do like I tell you, everything will be all right. I'll take you someplace where you'll be all right. But if you don't... <laughs> Never leave this room alive, Mrs. Clay. Thank you, Daddy. Goodness, I can remember when my potato cakes didn't make a hit like that. You see, I used to fry with those ordinary fats. And they often have a taste and smell of their own that can give things a greasy flavor. We just didn't know what we were missing until... I changed to pure all-vegetable Crisco. But what a difference from then on. Crisco's sweet and fresh. It brings out the real natural flavors of everything you fry. And light, tender Crisco fried foods are digestible. Doctors say so, too. Honestly, it's really like tasting fried foods for the first time when you stop using ordinary fat and change to pure, all-vegetable Crisco for frying. The part of George Graham was played today by Robert Donnelly. Yes, Mrs. Kling, for the moment at least, there seems to be no way out unless, well, Tomorrow, Frank Thayer gets a first-hand report from the woman's auxiliary, and Connie and Mary Jane reach a crucial moment as they try to see Mrs. Kling. So look in again tomorrow for the first hundred years, brought to you by Tide. And remember, Tide can really cut your soap bill. It goes so much farther in hardest water, it can save you 25% on just one wash -a load of clothes. Casey Allen speaking. This is the CBS Television Network.